Hi everybody, and welcome to Rhinance. In today's video, we're going to talk about dividends. I'll cover some common questions like, what are dividends? Why do some companies pay dividends while others don't? And why do some investors prefer dividends in their investments? All right, let's jump right into it and tackle the question, what are dividends? Dividends are a payment made from a company to the shareholder of that company as a reward for owning their stock. Dividends are paid out in cash, so the investor can choose what he or she may want to do with them. You could, for example, reinvest the dividends back into the company they came from, invest those dividends into another company, or even just spend them on everyday goods and services that you may want. Dividends are usually paid out on a monthly or quarterly basis, and that'll depend on which company in particular that you're investing in. So why do companies want to do this then? Well, if you're the owner of a profitable business, you'd have four main choices for what to do with your cash. You could reinvest the money back into the business to expand, just hold on to the cash and wait for the next good opportunity to come up. Buy back your own shares in the market. This is known as a stock buyback and I'll cover that more in depth in another video. Or you could pay dividends. Dividends get paid out to the investors of the company. So in general, investors like dividends because they are generating returns on their capital with each dividend payment. It builds trust between the company and their investors because investors can see firsthand that they are making money over time with their investment. In the market, it is also seen as a show of financial strength when a company can afford to pay regular dividends over many years. So why might an investor prefer a stock that pays dividends over another stock that doesn't pay dividends? For one, dividends create a reliable source of return on their capital without any effort from the investor at all. What this means is that if you buy a dividend paying stock and hold it for some period of time, you know that your investment will pay you every month or quarter, depending on the company, without the need for you to sell your stock. This can create a consistent stream of cash flow for investors that can be especially useful for those that require income for their everyday expenses. Additionally, if an investor chooses to use those dividend payments to reinvest back into the company or another dividend paying company, this can create compound interest for the investor on their capital. This can be very powerful over time in that dividends allow you to buy more stock, which in turn pays you more dividends, which buys you even more stock, and so on. Lastly, there can be certain tax implications which make dividends more or less preferable when compared to other forms of income, such as capital gains. This will be specific to your income situation and the country you live in, so I would do my own research beforehand to understand the specific tax implications. Now that we have covered the basics of dividends, I'd like to take you through a quick example of what your return may look like if you invest in a dividend-paying company. Let's imagine you invest in this fictional company, Ryan's Burger Shack, and buy 10 shares. These shares cost $50 a share for a total investment of $500. Ryan's Burger Shack pays dividends of $1 per share per year and will make payments every quarter. Since the payments are quarterly, this means that the $1 dividend will be split into four payments of $0.25 cents each for each share you own. Since we have 10 shares, we will be paid $2.50 each quarter or $10 per year. I'll draw out a timeline here, and let's say we hold the shares for five years, and then sell those shares at the same price we bought them at for $50 a share. So we have spent $500 initially to buy the shares, collected $50 in dividend payments over the five years, and then sold those shares for $500. Now, our original $500 investment has grown into $550 for a total return of $50 or 10%. As I wrap this up, you may be asking yourself, where can I find dividend information? There are tons of websites and apps out there that provide information about stocks, including dividend information. You can use the Stocks app that comes preloaded on your phone, or get the Yahoo Finance app. Yahoo Finance also has a website if you would prefer that, and it's a great place to start. This is not endorsed by Yahoo in any way, by the way, it's just a personal favorite of mine. All you need to do is search for the company you're interested in, and you'll be able to find their specific dividend information. Alternatively, you can also go to the website of the company that you're seeking information about and find the investor relations section. Here, they usually provide many metrics like how much the dividend is, the exact payment schedule, and how long they've been paying dividends for. Thanks for watching today. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. Leave me a comment if you still have some questions, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. See you in the next one.